Omega has just launched the 75th anniversary Seamaster. Welcome back to the channel, I am Adrian and this is where I simply document things that I find interesting about the watch world. I absolutely love the Omega Seamaster. I have a white dial version myself and so I was really looking forward to seeing what Omega were going to launch for the 75th anniversary. Omega, like a good few brands, absolutely loves to have a reason to launch a watch. However, the 75th anniversary of a watch seems like an absolute legitimate reason to celebrate a watch line. And I actually saw leaked images of this watch a couple of days ago. I was gonna lay into Omega. I was gonna title the video something clickbaity, something contentious like Omega does a Rolex. I might still do that. I was gonna make a flippant comment about how it's just a blue Seamaster. It's just a standard Seamaster in a different colorway than before. But isn't that just what Rolex does? Yes. Yes, and, and that's why it's called, or why it's called Omega does a Rolex. The difference is that the Seamaster 300M isn't the same as a Submariner. A Submariner is just one watch. It's, it, it's a line, but it's a one watch design with different colors. Whereas the Seamaster, it isn't just the 300M. It includes the Aquaterra, one of my all time favorite watches. It includes the World Timer, we've got the Ploprof, the Planet Ocean, and we've got the Ultra Deep. Now, when all of these models are placed together, this blue looks absolutely brilliant. And one of the cool things is when you line up all of these watches in order of water resistance from the Aquaterra at 150 meters down to the ultra deep at 6,000 meters, the blue gets deeper throughout the depths, throughout the watches, ending on the ultra deep, which is a really deep, dark blue. I really quite like that touch. My favorite dials out of this whole range, there's two. Uh, the Planet Ocean looks brilliant. I love that brushed blue dial. That looks bloody killer. I also love the aggressiveness of the ultra deep dial. Now the differences of these watches that do celebrate the 75th anniversary is simply down to color. We have a blue bezel, blue dial, and then the loom itself is also blue. The case back is a bit disappointing. I, I, I do like the fact it's celebrating the 75th anniversary. I do like the fact that that 75th anniversary thing is done in a classy way. It's kind of hidden on the back and it's not, oh, we're doing this thing. It's, it's just a cool looking watch with a little touch. But one thing that I love about Omega is the movement on the inside. Their Mata certified movements are absolutely superb. And although they're not well finished, it's still nice to see that stuff. On face value, it does seem that this is a weak way of celebrating the Seamaster range. But when you see them all together, that is quite an epic celebration. Omega has done pretty well with this. So I'm just about halfway through editing this video and I've just seen on Time and Tide's Instagram account, uh, they've actually seen the watches and they've just posted another image of the Ultra Deep. And what they've just posted pretty much just for me, I think means that Omega has won for releasing the coolest watch of 2023. The Ultra Deep has a special little loom writing on the dial that says Omega was here. There's nothing cooler than taking something as serious, as epic as Ultra Deep and putting a bit of fun on the dial, hidden as well in loom. That's pretty cool. There is another aspect where Omega is operating like Rolex, and that's with regards to the press. It seems like Omega are continually snobby, continually elitist about how they interact with the press. I can only assume that this is because written media can be controlled. When you write an article about a new watch, you often have to submit it to the brand for it to be fact-checked and to see what you actually say about it before it goes live. With YouTube, that doesn't happen, at least typically. It doesn't happen. A brand might ask to see a video before it goes live. For example, the Tudor video that I did where I went around their factory, they asked to see it before it went live. I obliged because they wanted to make sure that no faces were shown and, and things that were restricted weren't shown. That's absolutely fine. If they were to come back and they wouldn't, because they know not to, if they'd come back and say, oh, Adrian, we don't like how you said this about that. It's like, mm, tough shit, that's, that's, that's the game. And so this is one of the challenges around Omega is that they're operating like Rolex and controlling what is said about their products. As a watch enthusiast, I absolutely love Omega. As, as watch media, I find them a bit snobby, a bit elitist. Or maybe that's just my ego speaking. Guys, let me know what you think about how Omega are celebrating the 75th anniversary of the Seamaster. It's a significant watch for Omega. It's a significant watch for the watch community. There's so many lines within this Seamaster range. And so it's, it's really quite an important thing to celebrate. Important. If, if you like it, it's important. If you don't like it, then I guess it's really not that important. Drop a comment down below and let me know what you think of their new watches. And let me know what you think about how they handle press. Am I just being a bit sensitive with my ego? Every watch launch, I sign up to the press area on website and I just can't get in. Maybe I've upset them with the things that I've said over the years. If you want to check out watch straps and watch accessories, jump over to barkinjack.com. These straps are significantly cheaper than the Omega ones. And disproportionately, the ratio of money to quality, I mean, I don't think I'm even being biased in saying that the ratio is significantly better 
from Bark and Jack Strap versus the Omega. Maybe that's why they don't invite me out to the press events. If you're on Instagram, give me a follow at Bark and Jack. Also, give me a follow at Adrian Barker. And I'll see you guys very soon. It's still water. It's still hot. <laughs>